Audacious Church, I'm friends. It's so great to be with you this morning in another installment of our Audacious Devotions. And today I get the privilege to bring a meaningful devotion on something that's on my heart right now. So what I want to read from just now is from Genesis 37 verses 18 through 20, which say this, but they saw him in the distance. This is Joseph's brothers. They saw him in the distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Sounds intense, that doesn't it? This is what they said. Here comes that dreamer, they said to one another. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. I wonder today, church, have you ever had a time where you've been caught dreaming? Time when you've been caught dreaming. I think back to my sixth year politics A-level class. It was a brilliant, brilliant class. But as you can imagine, when we'd watch videos of political debate from the past with the blinds closed in the classroom, the room totally dark except for this light coming from the screen, the heating on in the school, it created an atmosphere where it was just really easy to drift off to sleep during this two hour class period. And I remember watching this video and slowly doing the heavy blink and slowly putting my head down in the class, head onto my arms and out of nowhere, I totally fell asleep in class. I remember waking up to a knock on my table as my politics teacher at the time looks down at me and says, are you okay, Mr. Brown? And I'm like, sir, I am so sorry. I totally just dozed off during that class. I wonder for you, have you ever had a time like that where you've been caught dreaming? Maybe for you, it's been when your spouse is put on that movie that they really want to watch, but you're just not so keen on watching and slowly but surely you doze off to sleep. Today we're not talking about that kind of dream. Dreams are defined in one place as a contemplation of possibility. And Joseph in his day had a dream that was viewed by his brothers as a dream of impossibility. To summarize Joseph's dream in layman's terms cost him his freedom at different stages of his life. His faith for the God dream that he had took him from the pit to the prison where later he ended up in the palace in charge of Pharaoh's palace and skillfully led Egypt through seven years of famine and seven years of abundance in which the God dream for Joseph became a reality. But the God dream for Joseph was so much more than a contemplation of possibility. In fact, it was a contemplation of impossibility. And I want to suggest to you today, audacious church and friends, the God dream on your life is so much more than a contemplation of what is possible in the natural. Rather, it has to be, it must be a contemplation of impossibility because we serve a God of the impossible. We serve a God who can do immeasurably more than all we can think, ask or imagine. So it should be be viewed as a dream that is impossible in the eyes of man. Just like Joseph's dream, his brothers seen it as impossible. But look what God done through Joseph's life. And for us, somewhere along the way, somewhere along the journey, we grow up. We put limits and borders in place where God never intended And instead of fanning into flame the gift of God, we douse the raging fire of our dreams with a water bucket filled half empty with realism and disbelief, considering and convincing ourselves that it's better not to play with fire because we'll only get burnt. Church today, like Joseph, your God dream has the potential to shake and shape the world around you. Today, I want to encourage you, wherever you are, to remove those borders that you've put in place in your life. Remove the barriers. Go back to the drawing board and ask God again, what is the God dream he has for you? 
And don't let the dream become a fantasy which is a distant thought of what could be in the future that has no tangible legs or action in the now. Rather, take the dream, bring it into today's terms and take an action today that will take you on the journey of the dream becoming a reality. No one done anything great by playing it safe and by settling for average and mediocrity. Oh, that sounds tough, doesn't it? But that's the truth. And today, church, if we could just grab a sense of what God sees for our life, sees the impossible through us, sees great exploits, great feats of faith, we would do more than we could even comprehend or imagine through the power of the Holy Spirit through us. Today, church, be like Joseph. May it be said of you, here comes that dreamer. Here comes that audacious dreamer from audacious church. Have the audacious dream, but don't let it settle as a contemplation, but take action. Today, take one action to bring the dream into reality. It may have been a dream you had many years ago that you've just let fall by the wayside. Well, let God in this moment by his Holy Spirit, bring that dream back to the forefront of your mind and start to take actions today. If there's still breath in your lungs, then there's still time to accomplish the God dream and do all that God has placed on your heart to achieve for him. Here comes that dreamer, may it be said of you and I in the days and weeks and months to come. Church, let me pray for you really quick before you go. Father, I pray right now for every person watching this devotional. Would the God dream be more than a fantasy, but would it become reality? Right now, Holy Spirit, bring back to the forefront of our minds those dreams, those ambitions that you placed long ago that just got lost in the myriad of life. And Father, give us the courage and boldness to follow your leading through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. God, I pray for a new strength, new courage, and new power today to do all that you're asking us to do. In your name, I pray, we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. It has been so great to get to share with you today. I hope you have a brilliant day and a brilliant week, whatever you're up to. Loads of love here from us in Chester, and I'll catch you really soon.